Going here now is CNBC contributor, former Labor Secretary, and now voiceover advertisement expert Robert Reich. He also doubles on his day job as author of Super Capitalism. We also have this evening, we welcome back Dan Mitchell, who's senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Now, Robert Reich, you want to fire Ken Lewis. The Service Employees Union wants to fire Ken Lewis. Okay, fine. I want to ask you how you want this. Do you want to fire him through a shareholder vote? Or do you want more federal government, White House command and control intervention in the private economy? Well, I would take a shareholder vote on that, Larry. I mean, after all, uh, you know, Bank of America epitomizes what is wrong with Wall Street. It's lost 80% of its share value since a year ago. Today, its shares slid mightily. Uh, it, it, it pays compensation about 20% larger than any other bank comparable size. I mean, risk metrics on Friday. A lot of institutional investors pay attention. Risk metrics called for him to be stripped of his chairmanship. I mean, I am not alone on this. Most of Wall Street agrees with me. And you must agree with me too, Larry, right? Uh, listen, if the shareholders vote him out, I can live with it. I don't feel like defending any of these guys. Uh, I don't even know, Mr. Lewis. I just want the shareholders to do it. I do not, Dan Mitchell, I do not want the White House to fire him because it seemed to me, well, Dan, that the White House fired Rick Wagner of GM. And while Wagner may have deserved to go, as per Ken Lewis, they shouldn't be making those decisions. Well, I fully agree. I worry that we're heading down the path to some sort of Argentinian style crony capitalism where it's only the executives that have close ties to the political class wind up keeping their jobs and anybody with any independence loses their jobs. And I'm not saying that to defend Ken Lewis or for that matter Wagner. They're certain that they haven't done a great job. And I'm also not a big fan of any corporate executive that wants to stick his snout in the public trough in Washington. But I don't want politicians mm. to do it. I wouldn't trust these politicians to mow my lawn. I don't want them selecting bank or car company executives. Well, Bob oh, Rice, I think I'd, I, I would trust them to mow my lawn. But, but let me just say one other thing here. Uh, if you don't like oligarchic crony capitalism, you certainly don't like this bailout. I mean, Bank of America got $45 billion so bailout. far. I shareholders hate and I, hate I mean, it. we are already shareholders. You're a shareholder. Bailout. I'm a shareholder. All taxpayers are shareholder. Are I we just, not? I want them to pay down TARP. I don't like this bailout. I actually agree with you, Robert, but I want to ask you the next question. Do you and the Service Employees Union wish to unionize the Bank of America and the rest of the financial services industry by denying a secret ballot to workers? Well, first of all, I can't speak for the SEIU. And by the way, I did not earn one penny on that voiceover. I did it because I believe in what I was saying, as I always do. And you did it uh, there very well. There is a First Amendment right in this country. You did and it. I said exactly what I believe. You did it and very in terms well. Of unionizing, in terms of, uni of unionizing employees, unionizing employees, that's one way of increasing the bargaining power and the bargaining leverage of people in this country who have not any power in this country at all, whose wages have been taken out trampling, and who have seen their, their savings and their investments absolutely disappear. Of course we want more unions. So Dan, Dan Mitchell, what happens here, okay? Card check, no more secret ballot for unionization debates and so forth. What would happen if the unions took over the financial services industry? You think they'd make it better or worse? Well, first, I'm glad Robert Reich and I both agree that the bailout was, a, was bad news, but I'm afraid we have to park company on something like getting rid of the secret ballot for workers. And the good news is that the issue is close to dead on Capitol Hill. A lot of Democrats realize it's not a popular cause to embrace the notion of stripping workers of their right to a secret ballot. If it did happen somehow, if they somehow rammed it through, it would be bad news. We shouldn't be mimicking Europe's welfare states. Those are places where unemployment is higher because the unions and government are in bed together and they've tilted the playing field against job creation. Well, wait, first of all, Dan, uh, Dan and Larry, let me agree with you on one thing. I don't like the portion of the of the Free Choice Act that actually calls for abolishing the secret ballot. I don't really like that. I would much rather increase dramatically penalties on employers for violating the rights of their workers to form unions. That's what's happening across this country. It's been happening for years. When I was Labor Secretary, I saw it. Dan, do you agree with that? Are they violating? I, I thought most of these NR, you know, National Labor Union Board debates show that actually uh, the companies have been quite even-handed. 
Uh, I think, if anything, the current U.S. law is tilted heavily in favor of unions. Uh, I'm all in favor of letting unions and management fight it out. I have no reason to support one side or the other, but I don't want government, I don't want politicians putting their thumbs on the scale and trying to help one side over the other. We should let okay, markets would you, decide. Would you, would you too, Dan and Larry, would you both support a provision? Let's, let's put aside the, the secret ballot. Would you both support a provision that said that employers who violate labor laws will be fined five times what current no, penalty already, is? Right now, it's, basically, right now it's basically right now it's a slap already, on the wrist. That's redundant. It already gets fined. I want to move on. It's already in there. I want to ask you, I want to ask you this. No, it's not in there at all. That's uh, the big problem. Robert Reich, what about the Obama attack on the credit card business and this was in your ad you guys are going to attack credit cards even though even though they've got to have risk based charge offs and interest rates why are you attacking the uh, great american credit card business well, first of all, the Federal Reserve Board is already considering regulations that would do exactly what Obama and Democrats in Congress want to do. So why do we uh, need The more? difference is that Obama and the Democrats want to do it now instead of waiting until July of 2010. I mean, people are, are finding that their, their actual balances, the balance that they're carrying on their credit cards, are suddenly, miraculously, subjected to increasing re interest rates without any notice, without any disclosure, or without any adequate disclosure. It seems to me that that is absolutely well, and should be illegal. Dan Mitchell, the Fed regulations will ensure disclosure and notification. But Dan, let me ask you this. I mean, these credit card companies, including the banks, are running a business, are they not? Every day I read, consumers are defaulting on their credit cards. Now, either you take the credit cards away altogether from anybody defaulting, or you got to have some risk-based uh, operations where you either raise the charge or you raise the interest rate. Otherwise, Dan, only the top 5% will get credit cards. This is what the left doesn't understand. Yeah, businesses aren't in existence to be charities. They exist to make money. And if you have a lot of people defaulting on their credit cards, then you have to obviously charge interest rates that are sufficiently high so that you don't go out of business. Well, now, what's wrong with that, Bob Rice? You heard Dan Mitchell. Well, you know, that's we had a capitalist you know, I seem to remember, I seem to remember a, a year and a half ago, a year and a half ago, we had a similar kind of discussion about what I called predatory lending practices to mortgagees. And Larry, you said, no, there's nothing predatory going on at all. Everybody knows exactly what's going on. And I said, no, it is predatory because a lot of people do not know what they're getting into. This is the exactly the same parallel situation. Well, a lot of people with knew cards. what they were getting into. A lot of people into. have no idea because their balances suddenly are subjected to higher interest rates. All I'm saying is you don't allow credit card companies to do that Are you in favor of interest rate disclosure. controls? Robert Rice, would you put limits to interest rates? Would you put limits to charges without knowing the credit situation? No, I'm talking about full and adequate disclosure. I'm talking about not changing the rules midway. I'm talking right, about well, not taking current balances and, and subjecting those current the balances to suddenly increases in interest rates. Dan Mitchell, rates. let me switch to our last topic. President Obama today, tight-fisted budget man that he is, is coming up with a $100 million budget cut. And as he said, we played a clip. He's going through the budget line by line, Dan. It's three and a half trillion some odd dollars. He comes up with 100 million bucks. Now, is this a joke or what? Uh, I almost thought it was April Fool's Day. Talk about a <laughs> kick in the teeth for taxpayers. We did a $410 billion omnibus. We did an $800 billion so-called stimulus. The president just rammed through a $3.7 trillion budget, <laughs> and now they're talking about $100 million of spending cuts. And oh, by the way, these wouldn't be spending cuts the way you and I understand it. These would be reductions in the planned increases that are already built into the government budgeting baseline. This was a, a spit in the face to hardworking American taxpayers who are tightening their belts while government is on a well, spending is, binge of historic you proportions. You know, Robert Rice, this was Obama's pathetic uh, response to the Tea Parties. You can't defend this, can you? A hundred million dollars budget well, cut? Well, I will. And it isn't look, even I'll a give, cut. I'll give, As Dan I'll said, give, it's from the rising of you. baseline. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I will give both of you, this is pretty small potatoes. I mean, it's the beginning. It's at least a gesture. It's an important gesture. But look at, I mean, I, you both are very, very concerned about these deficits. A lot of Americans are. I respect that. But you've got to understand something. And this is very critical. When consumers and businesses are not spending, when we are way below our capacity, government has got to have a deficit. Got to, it has to run a deficit. We're going to have to go into debt in order to get the economy back to full capacity. Yeah, I mean, I'm over getting Roosevelt. rid of uh, waste and abuse.
But this is not talking. I'm not, and yes, Obama needs to do Dan more. Mitchell, right. Dan Mitchell, I'm going to give you the last word. What do you think about those Keynesian big government spending multipliers? Is it, that the key to prosperity? It didn't work for Hoover and Roosevelt in the 30s. It didn't work for Japan in the 1990s. If more government was the route to prosperity, France should be economic mecca. It's no, not. I it worked it for there. us in the 1940s. I got it there. Robert Rice, thank you very much. Dan Mitchell, thank you very much. Coming